welcome to data mining with our course i am going to present how to apply the r programming language in application of data mining i am a research scholar in computer science department my name is arindam dasgupta now one of what is r basically r is a pr programming language it is basically a functional language for statistical computation and graphics initially it is developed by yaka and gentleman it is a it is it reached to its lots of statistical functions which are very essential for data mining applications basically it is a scripting language and this tool can be downloaded freely from under the gnu license and you can execute run or run the r programming in any platform such as windows mac os and linux because it supports all the platforms r is very beautiful language because it is basically functional language each functions are already implemented in the r library and we just use that functions for our purposes there are lots of packages data mining available data mining packages are available these packages are frequent pattern analysis and rules as uh, described in the theoretical class and classification and prediction algorithms cluster analysis packages there are time series data mining packages there are lots of packages available just we have to download the package in real time and just apply the functions on that packages now how to get the r tool to get the r tool we have to go to the this website it is called this website this is called sarn project org bin windows dot base just go to this link at first then download the r according to your platform in my case this windows platform that's why i have downloaded r win 32 exe after downloading the software we have to install the software it's very easy to install just click on on the uh, r exe icon i will show you the this is the this is the r software you just double click on this icon and just install by applying the next i have already installed here after that uh after installing the r studio we have to install another app software application it is basically integrate development environment it is also a free and open source ide it's called r studio it's very user friendly it provides a an user friendly interface to execute your r programming language i will show you the how to uh, what is the interface of the r studio Hmm. this is the interface of r studio just i am basically uh, this part of the top left one part of to, of this area is used to uh, write, write the programming language r programming language the bottom part is the basically the console of r uh, um, console of r Uh, executing the r script basically this is the editor and this is the r console and right hand side will display this part top right hand side this part will display the local variables uh, which are just uh, defined in the r terminal 
and the bottom of uh, portion you can get the what is this is the um, files which are in this computer and any plot will be displayed here this is a package package list which are which can be used in, in my program in our program and this is the help if any hard resource is needed then you can help get help from this uh, link and now i want to show you some basic r uh, program At first, to click file, create a one R script new file. I have created one new file, and I have just put the script here. Its scripts are suppose first line in first line of the script. It is it is showing x left arrow 2 here x is the object basically not is exactly like like variable basically it is a object it stores the very value 2 in the x variable suppose i want to execute this in our console Now, now I want to execute this. After executing this, the value two is has been assigned to object x. I want to view this value. Just type x here and write. This showing the value of x is two. Okay. Then I want to assign one expression. I am executing directly from my uh, source script by clicking here just you have to just put the cursor here and click run it will execute a particular command you see this executing this particular command is written here from this portion to this portion ok and now now I want to view what is the value of y. This is the value of y. Let us see. This is a basic expression e to the power minus x square by 2 and by sqrt 2 star pi. If I want to know the what is the value of pi, you just type the pi value. It is constant, it is already defined in R and then what is the, now I have to show how to store the multiple data into a particular object. Suppose I want to execute this v uh, this vectorization here C first bracket start within the bracket there are lots of values 4, 7 these are the values different types of values here basically it is a it is C is for collection it is a collection of data this data has been stored into the object V then after then after storing the value into the V. I want to display the value of v into the x into x. Now, see now each 
of the value has been square rooted. Now, check the value of x. Here, it is showing the each value is square rooted. That means, the vectorization on multiple data and the square root function has been applied in each of the data into the collections. Now, I want to plot how to plot multiple uh, vector data. Suppose, at first I store the collection of data into the x variable, this is the collection of data. Then I will display the x variable, then I apply this formula into each of data set here in x, then plot, then I will display the value of y, then I plot the data set. Now, start. Now, it is already stored, then it is displaying the value of x object. Now, it is displaying, it is computing the values of y object then it is displaying the values of y objects. Now, you want to plot uh, x data of x and y. Just for plotting the data of x and y, just use plot within x axis and y axis. Now, it is plotting here. is showing these are the x axis and these are the y axis. I want to now I want to connect these points with line. Just type lines there is a command lines. Now it is connected. These are the very basic implementation of plotting, which will be used in data mining application. Now, we, we can define functions in R programming. This is the structure, just write a function name here and then define it is a function the function name is this and function definition I just generate use one object h w then type insert one string here in this object and display the string. And this is the this is the calling of function. Now, at first I have to define the function. Now, function is defined. Now, I want to call the function. Here it is showing the hello world after by calling the function. Now, we have learned how to store the values into the objects and how to plot data. Then, I want to access one data file for data mining, you have to access multiple data files or a single file for the analysis purpose. For that, we have to uh, set one working directory. In, in, in my working directory, I have stored multiple data files. In C drive, I have created one folder data mining data and within this folder, I have 
stored lots of CSV files for analysis. These are the CSV files. Now, I want to retrieve these CSV files through R programming. At first, I have to set the working directory because my data files are stored in mining data folder under C drive. Now, I execute this instruction, then I have to clear my workspace, this workspace this clear these variables and for that we have to use rm list equals to ls. Now, execute this query, now my environment is cleared. After that clear my this console, this r console clear this console, we have to use this command is cat slash 014 within string, just execute this command for clearing your console. Now, my console is clear now. Now, second have to, we have to read the, there is a file salaries dot csv in my data mining directory, we have to read this file through this command, there is inbuilt function read dot csv it is meant for accessing the csv file and after executing this command entire data will be stored in salary objects, this salary object. Now, now salary objects is these salary objects you see. it is showing the tables. Now, I want to display the salary objects in my R console. Now, it is showing in our console. Suppose, I want to summarize this salary, summarize means it will display the, suppose there is a variable called discipline, in this variable there are two values A and B, it contains 181 values of A and 216 values of B. Similarly, these are basically nominal value and the numeric values, in numeric values it is showing the what is the minimum value, what is the maximum value, what is the quartile, what is the median value, mean value of each attributes in salary the minimum salary is this, maximum salary is this and mean salary is this and it is it is showing all the summary information, summary information of each attribute. Now, I will this is the basics of R programming, which are needed to needed in any data any type of data mining algorithms in a now at first I will discuss about how to use a priori algorithm for accessing association rules from a data set. 
basically a priori algorithm we have learned it finds the frequent data items with minimum support. Uh, in uh, I will show I have a grocery data set and from that grocery data set we, we just access the rules uh, with support 0.006 and confidence 2.5. After generating the rules we will uh, store the rules into a CSV file and for a priori algorithm there are the input is one file that is called candidate item set and output is the frequent item set. Okay. To execute a priori algorithm we have to use one package it is very essential it is called a rules. To download this package you just go to at right hand side click on install and type a rules here. A rules here it is displaying it is suggested the a rules here. Now in install the a rules package from this terminal after it is already installed in my system after installing the library installing the package sorry uh, we have to include the library in our program for including library just write library and type the package name and now i am including the library it is included it is included smoothly then i have to read the read the grocery csv file the grocery csv file is like that this is the grocery csv file these are the items which are bought together this is the transaction informations it contains the transactions of items this citrus food semi finished bread tropical food yogurt coffee are bought together in next transaction only whole milk in next transaction pip fruit yogurt cream cheese these are the data sets my i have to find the item sets which are bought together max in, in most of time most frequently Now, I have to read the data set. Now, now data set is readed. Data set read the data set is mm, stored into the grocery. then next it is showing the summary of the data set it contains 9835 rows and 169 columns because somebody 
uh, in transaction there are they have bought 169 items that is why it is showing here. These are the most frequent items whole milk, vegetables, rolls and soda. These are the most, most frequently items and these are the size of distributions, transactions. Now, and to plot the frequency of items, this is the frequency of items, item frequency, bottled water, other vegetables, rolled buns, root vegetables, these are the is showing the frequency of items. And to display frequency of plot, this frequency of item top 20 items here this is the top 20 items, frequency of top 20 items. It is basically relative frequency in 0 to 1 scale, the most the whole milk is maximum frequency has maximum frequency, the domestic is the minimum frequency. Now, I apply the a priori. Now, apply now I have applied the a priori algorithm. It has the confidence level Initially, the confidence is 0 0.8, minimum interval is 0, 0 0.5, and now no rules has been generated in first iteration. Now, we have to improve the grocery rules with support 0 0.6 and confidence 0 0.25, and minimum length is 2. Now, the rules has been created, I have to inspect the rules. Now, it is showing the rules, left hand side plotted plants, whole milk, pasta depends on whole milk with support, this is the support, this is the confidence and this is the lift value. These are the rules. Now, it is showing first three rules and to inspect by lift, inspect the last, last 5 rules by lift operation. Hmm. Now, it is showing herbs, if it is herbs then root vegetables will be in the right hand side, if it is berries then whipped and sour cream and tropical other vegetables, tropical fruit, whole milk, root vegetables and so on. Now, 
Now, I want to find a subset of rules containing any various items. Now, for that I have to use the subset function, this is the it, it contains the rules and item is varies. Now, I just execute this command, after executing this command I have to inspect this command. Now, it is showing rules with varies, varies whipped and sour cream, varies and yogurt, yogurt with confidence level this berries and other vegetables and berries and whole milk. These are the most frequently got items with berries. Now, I have to write the all the rules into a particular file. For that, I have to use write command, write the grocery rules into the file grocery rules csv. Now, I am now trying to execute this. Now, the file has been created, I have now I have to check the file. This is the rule files. Here, enter rule files has been saved. Now, this is the procedure how to generate association rules and save into the csv file. The library is a rules. Now, I am going to show how to generate the decision tree. For creating decision tree, we have to use four packages, one is caret, another is r part dot plot and for decision tree generation e 1071 and r part. E 1071 is, is the most important package for creating decision trees. In I am using one data set, it is it name is car evolution data sets. It contains five seven attributes, price of the car, maintenance value of the car, uh, doors of the car, number of persons can sit into the car, the boot area, luggage area of the car, the safety matters of the car and class. The class is either unsatisfactory, it is satisfactory good or very good. These are the class. I want to make this entry based on this information. After generating the decision tree, we, we um, will predict one value. Now, I want to add the library caret r part r plot and e 701. Now, we have to read the data from card data set. Then, I have to 
view the structure of the data set, it is showing the structure of the data set, it has 4 levels, BYPR means buying price, MACT means the maintenance cost, it has 4 levels, door number of doors, PR number of persons here, these are the structure of the data set. Then I am to display the first few data set. It is dis displaying the data set, six data sets. Then I have to divides the data set into two parts, 30 percent for testing the decision tree and 70 percent for training purpose. That is why I am creating a part one partition based on class column, CL is class based on class column and 0 0.7 means 70 percent of data has will be used for training purpose, this is false. Now, at, at first I have to make a seed on random value, then I have generated a training data set. Now, training data set has been created, now test data set, these are the test data set. Now, you have to check the dimension of the training data set. Now, it is show, showing the dimension of the training data set and test data set. The training data set contains 1211 records and test data set has five, 517 records with 7 attributes. Here is the summary of the car data sets. Now, I have to apply the training with number of um, ten folds, number of ten folds. number of resampling iterations, this is a number and repeats means the number of complete sets of folds to compute. I am here using repeated CV method for training, there are lots of method available, boot method, boot 632 method, CV method repeat CV method for training our data. Now, execute training, make one random variable, then, then I have to create the tree. This function train, this is a training function and it will create store the tree into the tree feet, this is the class level, data is training data, I am using R part method, this is the transaction control, true length is 10, 10 is the number of resampling iterations. Now, you have to execute the train data to create the tree. Now, tree is created. Now, I have to get the tree information. These are the data of key, this is the complexity parameters, this is the accuracy and kappa value. And it is showing, it is using CART algorithm. There are six predictors and four classes.
now I want to plot the tree, plot the recent tree. These are recent tree, but it will due to graphics problem in this machine, it will not displaying properly. Now, we have to test one data set. Suppose, this one testing data set, the testing data set showing uh, buying price is very high, maintenance cost is very high and class is unsatisfactory. This is my testing data, whether this data is correctly predicted or not, now I, now I, am, I am predicting this same data here, new data set. Predict D tree, the data record is this. Now, Now, it is predicting the correctly because it is unsatisfactory and in my data set it is also unsatisfactory here, these both are same. Now, I want to show how to apply R program to use k means clustering. The k means cluster, clustering generates cluster where the center of each cluster denotes mean value of respective objects. The input set of k means algorithm the number of clusters you want to generate and the data set and it will create k, k clusters. In my data set, I am using one wholesale customer's data set. In that data, data set, there are lots of uh, attributes. I am, I am trying to, the, the attributes are channel, regions, fresh, milk, grocery. I will generate the clusters on grocery attribute. It is very simple program. At first, we have to read the data from the wholesale customer. And data is stored in X very well. Now, I want to generate k means cluster on grocery data with four clusters and with number of iterations will be 10. Now, I am executing the k means algorithm it will be the result will be stored in km objects. Now, I want to print the data. It contains four clusters with these are the mean values of four clusters. These are the cluster vectors within cluster sum squares by clusters are these some of the objects of these clusters. 
these are the available components. Now, we want to generate the cluster on grocery. Now, it is showing the clusters on grocery, there are 4 clusters, this blue one is one cluster, red one is another cluster and green one is another cluster and a very small, this is a very small cluster, it is scattered basically. Suppose I want to display entire cluster, all the clusters of all attributes. Now, it is showing all the cl clusters of all attributes here. These are clusters of channel attributes, these are clusters of where is the grocery, these are clusters of grocery attributes. Now, Nave Bayesian classification. Nave Bayesian classification will classify the data set based on the probability Nave Bayes theorem and I am using one table, it contains mushroom data set. It is very big table. contains one class, whether it is eatable or poisonous, the class are E and P, whether it is eatable and poisonous. These are the characteristics of mushrooms, these are the characteristics of values, just like odor, odor means whether, whether type of odor. It contains lots of attributes, cap shape, cap surface, cap color, these are the abbreviations of the table, these are the abbreviations of the tables. And two classes, edible or poisonous. To execute Nebbishan algorithm, we need to 
include two libraries one is caret and another is PROC library. Then I have to import data same way similarly, then want to view the mushroom data sets, this is the same data. These are the first few, first six data sets. It is very big table that is why it is displaying this way. First six in second at second set of attributes is the third set of attributes. These are the fourth set of attributes which because there are lots of attributes that is why it is displaying in this way. Now, I want to view the class table. There are two classes edible and poisonous. There are 4000 around, around 4000 classes mushrooms are edible and around 3000 classes are poisonous mushrooms. What is the structure of the these are, this is the structure of the data sets. There are 23 variables in the data sets and around 8000 observations. Then for again I have to partition the data. for training set and test set. Now training set is been generated, now test set is generated. Now to make a schema class and order, class versus order schema. Now, testing the data set on class equal to p actual results. Now, we have to develop the confusion matrix with the probability test fun with the function probability test. Now, confusion matrix has been generated. Now, I have to make prediction curve. Now, execute the Navbishian algorithm on training data and it will be stored in the nav nav dot model and this will be the predicted data. Mm. Now, prediction on NB model testing data type is raw. Now, I want to print the confusion matrix with prediction 2, prediction data 2 to see for prediction data 2, this is the confusion matrix reference is E to E is and with the accuracy 0.9851. the class is edible here. Suppose I want to check another data, Sorry.
this is the first data. No, there is no. Now, I want to plot the ROC curve of Bayesian matrix. prediction matrix. Now, this is the curve hmm. this is ROC curve for Bayesian classification, this is the specificity and sensitivity curve. Therefore, for executing the naive Bayesian algorithm, at first we have to partition the data into training set and test set, then make a schema in this class with a particular attribute, then the actual results based on personas here, then generate the confusion matrix. After that, execute the Navigation algorithm. This is a procedure. Okay. Thank you.